Legend of Total War here, and today we're doing another Top 5 Total War video. This time I'm going to be covering the Top 5 Most Difficult Starts in a Total War Game. So that's to say the factions that have the hardest time just getting stable, whether it be establishing a decent economy, getting their military up to scratch because their initial units suck, or just fending off the people that are coming for them right at the start. Now that's not to say that these factions aren't strong or aren't potentially strong, but it's more about the initial challenges that they have to face at the start of the campaign. Usually the case being being overwhelmed by enemies. A strong faction being overwhelmed by 10-20 enemies can easily be overcome. In addition to that, I'm only going to select one faction from any particular Total War game, so that we don't have all of these top five picks from one or two Total War games, so that way we get a bit of variety amongst the Total War games that are available. Anyway, let's now move into the number five slot for the most difficult Total War starts in a Total War game. Coming in at number five is the Ottoman Empire in Empire Total War. Now the Ottoman Empire is a very powerful faction. It starts off with the most number of territories compared to any other faction in the game. It starts off with two allies, Crimea and the Barbary States. So why is it so difficult? Well, it's because everybody that else around you has only got one thing on their mind. Remove kebab. Persia, fellow Muslims, they want to remove kebab. Russia, Poland, Lithuania, Austria, Spain, France, everybody, they want to remove kebab. Everybody hates the Ottomans in this game. Now, whilst it is possible for you to establish diplomatic treaties with these powers, you're probably going to have to give up either a lot of money or some territory in order to appease them. Because in the early stage of the game, the Ottoman army is not very good. You might be able to hire a lot of numbers, but your troops suck. It's mostly just peasants. Now, one of the best u abilities in this game is the fire by rank ability, which all of the European factions will have pretty early on. And the Ottomans, even though they can research it, will not be able to actually utilize it until the late game, giving their European counterparts a hell of an advantage against them. In addition to that, the Ottoman economy is not particularly strong, because the best way to make money is through good trade deals by getting trade resources from Africa, Brazil, and Indonesia. And you're kind of stuck at Spain's discretion whether to get ships out of the Mediterranean. And even if you do, people will raid that coast of yours and raid those trade routes pretty damn quickly. So getting an economic, a military, and a diplomatic good start with the Ottoman Empire is quite difficult. That's why they're getting the number five slot. Anyway, let's now move on to number four. Coming in at number four is the Uesugi for Shogun II, the Sengoku Jidai era. Now, there are a lot of factions that could be chosen for the most difficult start top five list in, Sh uh, in Shogun 2. There's a lot of factions that do have a really difficult start. And I had to think long and hard about why why the Uesugi. And in, for me personally, part of a successful Total War strategy is to basically, at the start of the game, knock off one of your, your neighbors right off the bat. And for the Uesugi, that's actually very difficult because their neighbors are very, very far apart. So by the time you get your tiny initial army over to one of them, they've already built up too strong. And the Uesugi have one of the weakest early game armies. Most of their, their faction traits are for their end game. They have one of the strongest end game armies. But at the beginning, they got a tough time. But if you can survive their initial, initial challenges, they're very strong. Anyway, let's now move into number three. Coming in at number three is the Odrysian Kingdom for Total War Rome 2. Again, Rome 2 is another game where there's a lot of factions which you could potentially choose as the toughest start for this game. A lot of factions start off with barely any territory, with weak armies, and are hated by their, by their neighbors. But I think none quite so much as the Odrysian Kingdom. I mean, the Odrysian Kingdom does potentially end up becoming one of the most powerful factions, if you can manage to survive the first 20 turns. Because although their late game armies are very strong, their early game armies are just complete fucking trash. Now, most you, most uh, factions in this game have a decent beginning game unit, like a, a levy spear type unit that has a lot of melee defense. That can, at, at the very least, if you like to cheese like I do, auto resolve your way through the start, making legendary difficulty at least bearable. But the Adrissian Kingdom, uh, they they resort more to melee attack, and unfortunately, the auto resolve favors melee defense. So. Their armies aren't quite up to scratch with their Macedonian neighbors or if really anyone else around them. 
especially on legendary difficulty. The main problem being that their economy completely sucks. Their buildings don't generate a lot of money, and if you want to hire mercenaries to get slightly better units, well, although you can recruit them fairly cheaply, keeping them on your payroll is extremely expensive since you have a plus 50% upkeep penalty. Their faction bonuses are quite weak. And again, the main thing is they're hated by all their neighbors. Establishing allies that are actually going to stay allies is really difficult with these guys because again, everybody fucking hates these guys. And you know what? I don't blame them. When the AI is in control of them, they're a bunch of assholes. Anyway, and that's why the Adrissian Kingdom gets the number three slot as the, the third most difficult start in the Total War game. Anyway, let's now move into the number two slot. The number two slot goes to the Crooked Moon in Total War Warhammer 1 and 2. Again, Total War Warhammer is another game where you could ha choose a number of factions that have the most difficult start. But why going with the Crooked Moon? Well, in my opinion, it's just like the other ones. They start off with the weakest armies, poorest economies, and everybody hates them. Now, to add insult to injury, the game withholds some of your best units until you capture Karak Eight Peaks, which is basically half a world away. So, the idea of a migration campaign for most factions in this game is quite viable. Pick a pick a, a new home territory that is better defended, which Karak Eight Peaks is really good to defend. The problem is traversing all that land to get there, because everybody hates you. Um, I haven't really played that much as the Crooked Moon, but what I have played, it's not particularly an enjoyable campaign. You move into someone's territory, you just want to get past, and they declare war on you. So, but if you do go straight to Karak Apex, you'll have basically a trail of people being like, let's go hunt those fucking gobo bastards. And once you do get there, if you're not ready for it, the, the mutinous skits usually have... Uh, crooked uh, Karak 8 Peaks pretty well developed, so it's got a large garrison, and they'll usually have one or two full stacks just sitting there waiting to repel you. So, coupling with their incredibly weak armies, poor economy, everybody hates you, and the thing that you got to do right at the start to get the Karak 8 Peaks, that's why Crooked Moon gets the number two slot for the most difficult Total War starts. Anyway, let's now move into the number one slot, which I'm sure you guys can guess. Coming in at the number one slot, which I'm sure isn't surprising anyone, is the Western Roman Empire for Total War Attila. Again, this faction is very powerful, but it's not, it's not its overall power that makes this difficult. It's the fact that it's everything else. Internal issues. Every single one of your provinces, on legendary difficulty of course, which I do consider every one of these on the hardest difficulty, wouldn't make any sense comparing them on the easiest difficulty, um, or every single one of your provinces are poised to revolt pretty early on, even your capital, just due to legendary difficulty penalties, due to immigration, religious penalties, whatever. External threats. Everybody hates you. You know, the Western Roman Empire racked up quite a lot of uh, animosity t between its Germanic neighbors, so it's no surprise that they basically out for blood pretty early on. The Saxons are going to attack Camelodunum pretty early on. Ireland, the Hibernians, and the... Um, the uh, the Picts and Caledonians don't expect to hold on to to Britain unless you unless you're really skilled and you really want it because it's not worth anything as well. That's the thing about the Western Roman Empire. So many of your territories aren't worth shit because on legendary difficulty you start off with about a 59% corruption. That means that 59% of the income from your territories is lost because you own too many territories. So losing some territories right off the bat is a viable option. You don't have to do it, but it is a very viable option. In addition to that, the Western Roman Empire armies, their basic infantry are not really that good at the start. Late game, they're excellent, but at the start, eh, not so much. The Limitani border guard, the Comatotensi spears, whilst they can hold the line reasonably well, they've got basically no melee attack. So going into battles to, f to actually kill your enemies, they're not very good at it, which meaning you you really have to rely on a lot of missile units and cavalry, which is quite expensive for the Romans. You'll oftentimes have to rely on hiring mercenaries and sometimes disbanding them straight after using them, just because money is really tight. Trade is only really a good option with the Eastern Roman Empire, and but the thing is as well, none of your trade resources are really established. You don't have gems anywhere. Uh, you have to go and conquer someone if you want to get them. And your faction traits, whilst they are fairly strong, don't really help you that much in the early game. Now, whilst you do have the Eastern Roman Empire as basically a secure border, they're not usually going to stay completely intact at the early game as well. So they could very easily let the Sassanids pour through 
uh, through Egypt and come at you. That doesn't usually happen, but it can happen. The Garamantians usually declare war on the Eastern Roman Empire, but usually focus on you. So expect to be at war with at least 10 people by a couple of turns in. Expect to be bankrupt very early on, and expect that a lot of your settlements are going to have revolts. Now, if you think, okay, that's that's reason enough, okay, apart from, you know, in addition to that having a shit emperor, the Huns. The Huns are coming for you as the Western Roman Empire. Be prepared. Although that's not really the early game stuff, you gotta be prepared. You need to have a good early game to be ready for them. Anyway, that's the top five list. What do you think? And apart from that, I'll see you next time, fuckers.